Hi there, Jeffrey Rhodes from Experimental Homesteader, Exotic Gardening at SherryAnnRichardson.com. Uh, sorry that this is late, uh, but we just got back home. We were down in Indianapolis today at NRA Indy 19. Um, <laughs> this was the uh, 2019 NRA uh, Annual Meetings and Exhibits. Uh, <laughs> We went down there. Um, we weren't really sure what we were getting ourselves into. Um, we decided that we wanted to go uh, primarily because President Trump uh, was doing the keynote speech uh, and we wanted to hear Trump speak. Um, this was a new experience for both of us, actually uh, seeing and hearing President. Um, any president um, and wasn't entirely sure just you know how I was gonna feel about uh, listening to Trump um, but we also wanted to see the uh, exhibit hall uh, it's <laughs> they, they touted it as 15 acres of guns and gear uh, which it was uh, the exhibit hall area is, is basically 15 acres in size. Um, and there were guns and gear of all sorts. Um, now, Indiana is a um, background check state. Uh, so you have to go through a background process and wait to be able to purchase a firearm. So they were not actually selling firearms at the event um, but you could look at you could get an idea of what you wanted um, you could make purchases of gear um, but the guns themselves were not for sale uh, at sight um, but you could you know basically you could look at the products you could get their catalog you could order online or, you know, however you wanted to do it, you could make arrangements, but uh, you still had to go through a, pro a background check process. Um, but it gave you a better idea, you know, you could go in there and you could look at and feel and, you know, see what was available um, from manufacturers. Um, Smith & Wesson was there, um, Glock was there. Uh, in fact, Glock had a special guest there uh, who is going to be back again tomorrow uh, signing autographs. Um, I didn't realize he was there, so we did not get in line. Uh, when we did try to get in line for an autograph, uh, it was too late. They had already closed it um, because they only had uh, a limited amount of time left before the exhibit hall was going to close. And uh, they had enough people in line that that was going to they were barely going to make it, I think. Uh, the special guest was Chuck Norris. Um, <laughs> so we didn't actually get to meet him, but we were close. We did get some pictures of him. Um, he was talking to and signing autographs for other people. Um, and uh, it was kind of cool. Um, Would have been better if we'd actually got to meet him, but we didn't. Um I did get to meet and shake hands with a uh, Congressional Medal of Honor winner, um, which was very cool. Uh, I got his autograph. Um, there was also a member of the uh, bomber uh, group, um, the uh, 509th Command. Uh, the gentleman that was there was the intelligence officer for the Enola Gay, which was the plane that dropped the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Japan, on August 6th, 1945. Um, so this gentleman uh, was friends with Paul Tibbetts, the captain of the plane. He had Tibbetts's uh, flight uh flight suit, I'm trying to think of the word, um, 
and it was on display there. Um, so, you know, there, there were quite a few interesting uh, individuals. Uh, I got to meet several people. Um, got to listen to Trump. I did video uh, the entire speech that Trump gave, uh, along with the speech by uh, Mike Pence, vice president. Um, we uh, will have to edit the uh, speeches a little bit um, as far as removing the music that was played um, because YouTube will uh, get upset with us because it's uh, copyright material. Wasn't that just at the very beginning and at the end as they were walking on and off stage? Uh, yeah. The, yeah, the, that's it's, what I yeah. yeah. The, 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 the speeches will air in their entireties. Uh, we just have to trim off the music at the beginning and end of the speeches. Um, there was also an individual who sang the national anthem that uh, we will probably edit that out as well, unfortunately, um, because once again, we're running into copyright issues uh, and, you know, we're trying to make YouTube happy. Um, <laughs> But uh, there were some very interesting things said. Um, one of the key things that I came out with um, was basically Trump and Pence announcing uh, that they are running for re-election. Um, which, you know, I figured was going to happen. Uh, wasn't really expecting them to announce it at uh, this particular venue and uh, in these speeches but uh i figured it was it was coming you know the uh, several other people have announced their uh candidacies and so uh as the incumbents they didn't really have to announce quite as early um but uh you know i i figured it was coming um and this just confirmed it, you know. Um, but they were that basically the the comment was, you know, that they wanted six more years in the White House, um, <laughs> which is their, you know, more or less unofficial announcement they're running. So, uh, and actually, Trump did say something about that that you know it was time to gear up for the the campaign. So. Um, There were a number of interesting points made uh, in the speeches. Um, you know, I wasn't really sure what to expect at first. Um, you know, I, I don't consider myself to be, you know, a gun-toting lunatic. Um, I do own a couple of firearms um, as a... Civil War historian, um, I tend to go for antique weapons. That's my preference. Um, I do support the Second Amendment. You know, it is important in this country that we have the right to bear arms. You know, it's our right to own guns. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily going to, you know, strap on a gun and wander around everywhere carrying a gun. I don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, but I don't have a problem with owning guns. The, the issue is, is responsibility. Being a responsible gun owner. Um, being safe with my guns. Um making sure that anybody uh, that I associate with, you know, that comes into my house is aware of and is careful uh, around my guns. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm not going to, you know, unless it's, it's a, like a reenactment or something special, I'm not going to put a gun on my hip and go wandering around. 
Um, trying to think of what else to uh, that I really want to say about this. Um, Did you, you hear know, your take on what President Trump had to say? And did I just miss the whole thing? No. Not I'm I'm working on it. Okay. I'm trying to compose <laughs> some of my thoughts. Okay. <laughs> um it was a hour long speech. Um so there was quite a bit of material that he uh talked about. Um one of the issues that kept coming up, one of the, one of the, the comments, is that it's our God given right to have guns. Now, I have a little bit of problem with that. I don't quite see it as a God given right. Um, it's a constitutional right, and I'll agree with that. Um, you know, it's the Second Amendment, it gives us the right to own and bear arms. Okay. Um, there was a very important, you know, part of the Constitution, it's part of the Bill of Rights. There was a, a huge reason for it to be put in there. Um, going back to the founding of this country, um, but putting it as a God-given right, um, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I don't think God um, gave us guns told us to carry them um but you know i understand what they're trying to say um you know it is one of our rights um and they're just you know basically trying to pull religion into it as well um <laughs> but there were there were a number of things, you know, that I, I I came away with feeling positive about. Um, you know, there were several things that Trump was saying that that really did make sense. Um, that he had several people get up on stage with him uh, that had experiences that. Um, if they had not had guns available, um, would have been very different situations. Um, you know, and it just, it, it really kind of hit home with some of it. Um, it, it, it put certain things in a new light to me. Um, I, I, I still sort of have problems with the concept of, um, Owning automatic weapons, or, sorry, semi-automatic weapons, assault weapons, um, AR-15s, AK-47s. Um, you know, I can understand having a hunting rifle, I can understand a shotgun, but some of the automatic rifles just kind of, you know, what's the point other than as a collector? Um, but there were a couple of these stories of people that... Um, wound up using AR-15s to um, stop people from being killed um, that kind of made it a little easier to accept the idea of owning an AR-15. Because um, the one guy's story, um, the guy that he wound up um, going up against, you know, this guy was in tactical gear, uh, using an AR-15. Um, I think he said the guy had like 15 30-round magazines when he went into this church. Um, and... The, the uh, shooting at the Texas church that yeah. just occurred. Yeah, yeah it, it was the, the church in Texas. Um, and this guy, you know, it was his church. Um his friends that, you know, and, and neighbors that were being killed. And he got his own AR-15 and, and basically fought it out with this other 
this this uh, this killer. Um, <laughs> this bad person. Right well, I mean, <laughs> they they shot at each other. Um, yeah. You know, he took gunfire from the guy. He shot back. Um, you know, it was AR-15 versus AR-15. You know, if he'd had people walk down to that church uninjured. Yeah. Which is sad. Um, you know, there was seven uninjured. Uh, there were, what do you say? I think it was 27 killed and, and 20 more wounded and only seven walked out without a gunshot. And Um, they were all hurt and wounded by the bad man with the gun, not, yeah, not the other guy. Um, but if he'd have been armed with something other than an AR-15, he basically would have been outmatched. Um, but it was, you know, even odds, basically, because they both had the same weapon. Uh, but the other guy had a lot more ammunition, you know, walking into a situation, you know, with, with 15 30 round clips, you know, that's a lot of ammunition. Um, that's, you know, he's, he's intending on killing a lot of people that way. Um, but, you know, I still, you know, I'm still a little back and forth about the, the assault weapons. Okay. Um, but it does make me, you know, reconsider some of my, my position on it. Um, but I just, you know, and there's, there's a lot of material to cover. Um, and I don't think I'm going to cover all of it tonight. Um, because there, I'm still trying to process some of it and think about it. As to, you know, what Trump said and, and my take on what he said. I think um, you should cover about the uh, the paper that he signed and the little bit of research that we've done since that seems to be a hot topic in the media and they're not quite getting the story right. <laughs> um, this was a... a uh, a UN treaty um, that was proposed by the Obama administration right at the end of Obama's uh, term of office. Um, it was sent to Congress to be ratified. It hadn't. It still hasn't yet been ratified. Um, it basically uh, is a an arms dealing uh, legislation um, it, it's basically to kind of control and uh, police uh, the sale of arms to certain areas um, certain countries um, trying to keep weapons out of the hands of terrorists and um, Human trafficking. Human trafficking. Um, things like that. And the United States already uh, controls or, or polices themselves uh, on this matter. Um, they, they really try to control and track uh, where the, the weapons go, who gets them, um, you know, and the UN was trying to basically put in place um, this arms treaty um, to put a lot more countries doing the same thing. Um, the issue, though, is that Russia and China were not part of this agreement, and they are the number two and three uh, providers of weapons worldwide. The United States is number one. Uh, we uh, export the largest number of firearms. Um, and we police ourselves. So basically what the UN was wanting was, was to have some control over what we already do. 
And what Trump is saying is we don't need them to have their fingers in our pie. Uh, we do it ourselves. Um, if they want to, you know, control other countries um, and, and police other countries, that's fine. Um, but we don't really need them interfering in what we already do. It's, it's keeping our sovereignty over our weapons trade. Maybe you should explain what sovereignty means. Because it's a word people don't hear a lot. It's basically keeping the control in our hands rather than in somebody else's hands. Um, and, and, and here's my take on that. A lot of other countries have fanned guns completely. They've taken the guns away from their citizens. And the only people that have the guns are the military or the police. And some of you might think this is okay. But like the man was saying tonight, when he grabbed his gun, he knew the police were on their way. But the truth is, by the time the police would have got there, even though they were going as fast as they could go to get there, the other seven people that survived unharmed would have been either shot or dead. The person that did it would have gotten away. And it is very important that as citizens that we have our second amendment right and that we also understand that there is a responsibility to owning a gun and that we have a responsibility to keep it out of the hands of people who are not stable might want to do this um i know a lot of states like Indiana already have gun walls in place but let's face it just like drugs if somebody wants a gun bad enough there are illegal ways to get it the black market does exist and what can I say well you missed one of the groups that have guns in those countries oh. she mentioned the military and the police it's also the bad guys. Yes. The, you the, know, criminals. the criminals have guns. Yep, they sure do. Um, and one of the key things that was being said today um, was the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is with a good guy with a gun. Um, and it is, it is true. Um, I picked up a sign that some that one of the places was giving away, and it was uh, is it had gun control, but gun was marked out and self written in, self control, rather than gun control. Um, we need to be responsible for ourselves, um, and that's that's a key thing is the self-control and, and self-responsibility um, rather than passing, you know, gun laws, you know, and um, outlawing guns. You know, the, the idea is, you know, control ourselves, you know. Sorry. <laughs> Let me put this in front of you so they can read it. Oh, that's not going to work. No, that's not going to work. All right. Well, anyway, and these were passed out today. That's why I was just saying yes. what was on it rather than trying to show it. Yeah, well, I, I thought I would share. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the treaty... It was basically just giving the UN um, 
a little bit too much control over something that we already do. Um, and Trump decided that he was going to make the announcement at the, uh, the convention or at the, the annual meeting during the keynote speech that he was going to uh, request that the uh, the ratification paperwork be returned to him unfinished so that he could dispose of it. Uh, basically say, telling the UN, never mind, we are not a part of this. Uh, do what you want with the other countries, but we're not part of it. Um, and I kind of feel like if, if the UN was pushing harder for Russia and China to be part of it, then maybe there would be a little bit more, you know, okay, we'll participate as well. Um, but without that, you know, we, we don't really, you know, the, we've got it under control. Well, <laughs> not really, but we, we have our own system for it. Um, and we don't really need the UN involved at this point in time. Um... Trying to think of what else that I want to say right now about all of this. I think everything was very calm today. People were respectful. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was. It was. Um, you know, <laughs> it was kind of entertaining in some ways. Um, it was a new experience for for her. Um, going in, uh, we had to go through metal detectors. Uh, and the Secret Service was also uh, using wands. Um, you know, you'd step through the metal detector, and then you, they would run the wand over you, and you had to turn around, and they'd run the wand over your back. They were being very cautious, which is good. Um, they were inspecting uh, purses, uh, bags, anything that, that you were carrying in. Um, you know, standard... Secret Service security for, you know, the president being there. Uh, but she had never really been through, you know, that whole uh, kind of airport security style of... Uh, and uh, But we got in and uh, got settled. Uh, it was a fairly decent crowd in size. Um, and, you know... It was it was actually a pretty good you know. Uh, somebody mentioned that they they that there was a disruption of some sort at one point. I didn't see it. Um, it I, was I'm somebody not, taking a selfie. Yeah, it, it was something something like somebody was trying to take a selfie and lost control of their phone and threw it. Um, they <laughs> thought maybe they somebody was trying to throw something at the president, and evidently this person was was tackled and dragged out of the. The stadium, but I didn't see anything like that. I didn't either. Um, so I don't know that that actually happened. It's kind of comical if it did, um, but you know, I didn't. I didn't encounter you know anything disruptive. Um, I did notice some of the the Secret Service around. Uh, we did have a Secret Service agent uh, where we were at. Uh, he was just a little bit behind and to the left of us, um, which was kind of kind of cool in some ways. Um, I know there was more Secret Service there than what I noticed. Um, and there was a lot of military men and women there. Yeah, we had a lot of, of veterans. Um, yes. Uh, and... You know, which, you know, I understand, um, you know, NRA membership, there are a lot of veterans are NRA members. Um, 
they've used weapons, they, you know, want to be able to keep their weapons. Um, so, you know, it's understandable. And there was um, a lot of education and not just about weapons either. Yeah. The, we didn't sit through any of the seminars that was going on. Uh, we would have liked to have, but we didn't really have the time for it. Um, we looked through the program at some of the, the, the seminars. Uh, there were several that, that looked really interesting. Um, and maybe next time we'll have a little more time to be able to do more and be able to sit through some of the seminars. Um, but, you know, there was, there was a lot of educational programs provide, you know, that, that were being presented. Um, and, you know, it was, it was interesting. Um, I actually enjoyed myself. Um, you know, there were, <laughs> I saw a lot of guns. <laughs> Teenagers. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, there was, there was gear. Um, I mean, they had, you name it, they basically had it. Um, a lot of antique guns. There was, I was drooling. Um, one of, one of the booths that was set up, um, is a, an auction site. Um, they deal in, uh, basically antique firearms. Um, and they, they, it's an auction house and they had a display uh, a number of cases with uh, firearms in them uh, that they were getting ready to auction. Um, they run a number of, of auctions through the year. Um, and uh, some of the stuff that they had just, oh. Now, I know the value of some of it, and I know how much some of it was going to go for at auction. But... You know, I still would would have just you know killed for some of it. Um, uh, don't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was <laughs> just incredible firearms, uh, swords, uh, various weaponry that just um, was you just was would have picked crap with the chickens. <laughs> uh, just absolutely incredible to see. Um, would have loved to have handled them, but being antiques and, and up for auction, they were in, in, in cases where they couldn't be touched. Um, and, uh, but I, you know, some of it was just amazing. Um, but there were a number of, of booths that had, um, various displays of, of, um, weaponry, um, firearms dating back, you know, to the early ages of firearms. Um, you know, there was, there was one booth that was early, uh, pocket pistols. Um, there was a booth that was, uh, dealing in, uh, Kentucky long rifles. Um, uh, ba- a lot of it was reproduction stuff. Um, but some of it was actual antiques. Um, there was several that were, you know, my time frame, uh, Civil War era, um, the various weapons that were used um, on both sides of the Civil War. Um, at one point, I, w- I was looking, I was looking at a uh, Springfield 1855 um, musket. Um, with bayonet, uh, that was just incredible. Um, would love to own something like that. Probably never will, but, you know, it's one of my dreams to own something like that. Um, and of course, you know, I have that right as long as we have the Second Amendment. Uh, we lose the Second Amendment... I lose my right to even own uh, historic weapons that I could use uh, to teach with. Um, Because in the past, I have done some teaching and used uh, some of the weapons that I had at the time to show the uh, progression of firearms. You know, 
going back to basically the early flintlock and, and matchlock weaponry, working your way through the single shot cap and ball to the revolver, uh, to the cartridge weapons, uh, from single shot to multi shot. And, you know, without the Second Amendment, I can't do that. You know, I can't own those weapons. I can't display them. I can't teach with them. You know, so, yeah, I, I support the Second Amendment. Um, and, you know, like I've said, you know, I own guns mainly for display and for the historic value of them. But, you know, I own them, you know, and I want to keep that right to own them. And I have a visitor. Hmm. Hi, Gray. She's being very vocal. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, uh, I think that's going to do it tonight. Um, once again, you know, sorry that this is late, but, you know, we had an adventure. Um, so, please subscribe. Help us out. Uh, give us thumbs up, thumbs down, comments below, and we will see you again tomorrow. Have a great evening.